Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Billy Keels, the host of the Going Long Podcast. Freedom. Every week I'm going to be here interviewing the absolute best in the business as it relates to real asset investing, as well as real Main Street investors. We're going to be having conversations where you can listen in and that's going to help you to continue on your path to education so that you feel much more comfortable as well as confident in investing long distance. So make sure that you, uh, that you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you're liking it as well because that way you can get every single episode as soon as it comes out. And by the way, don't forget to leave today's episode a five-star review. Let's go ahead and listen to today's conversation. Welcome to the Going Long Podcast. We're back once again to continue to educate you so that you feel much more comfortable and confident investing beyond your backyard. I'm your host, Billy Keels. And you know what? If you've ever wanted to learn how to learn more and keep more, then guess what? This is the show that you're going to want to listen to until the very, very, very end, I promise you. Because today's guest not only has 20 plus years of experience in real estate investing, and get this, doing it long distance in states like New York, Texas, Ohio, and Mississippi. Uh, She's also the author of Hidden Investing, and I'm sure she's going to talk to us a little bit about that. She's also the founder of KeepMore.com, and she's the founder and CEO of MQ Ventures, LLC. And she's on a mission to educate and share investment opportunities with successful, high-earning professionals. I want to welcome to today's show, Holly Williams. Holly, welcome to the show. Hey, it's great to be here. Thank you, Billy. Hey, Holly, I love your energy. This is going to be awesome. I'm absolutely sure of it. Um, and so, We're look, let's, have fun. yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Let's jump right into it. So, first thing is, help us understand what city do you live in in the U.S.? So, I live in New York City. Um, Rockefeller Center is across the street, and um, you may have seen it. There's, you know, stuff going on there. You may have probably heard of it if you've. <laughs> ever watched American television, the Today Show is right across the street. Too, so. Awesome. And if you've never okay. seen the Today Show, that's one of the things that you must do when you go to New York City. So awesome. So New York yeah. City, I think everybody pretty much knows. Maybe there's one person in the world that doesn't know where New York City is, but uh, we got you there. Holly, what's the most positive thing that's happened to you in the last 24 hours? I think... <clears throat> So there's a couple, actually, our, we, there's this guy over here and he's running to get reelected, our president. Mm-hmm. And there's a big uh, brouhaha, there always is, but today's brouhaha is about his tax returns. Mm. And he paid 700, the, the skinny is, the word on the street is that last year he paid $750 in taxes. 750. 750. Right. And so you would not believe what's going on over here with people saying he's broke. He doesn't have any, you know, he's lying. He's not a billionaire. He's cheating the government. He's doing all of this. And it just totally um, validates the things that my book talks about and how, uh, the five, we're just not financial. I know we have no financial literacy, mm. financial education over here. So mm. uh, Europe doesn't sound much different. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's a financial education is one of those things that is, is happening. So the fact that you heard about that, this is something that is positive. I'm sure we're going to dig a little bit more into that. And just by the way, I actually had that in one of the WhatsApp groups and people were asking me like what this whole $750 thing was about. And so, yeah, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll unpack that. We'll definitely unpack that, especially for those um, six figure salary earners. And there are a lot of them that are watching us and are listening to us. So um, listen, I've highlighted a couple of things, Holly, but I would love for you to tell us a little bit about your backstory. And if you can highlight maybe some of the things uh, in terms of decisions that you've made uh, Mm and to get to this point in your journey would be very, very helpful. Sure. So I grew up in in Houston, Texas. My father uh, was in human resources for an oil company. My mother was a school teacher. Um, And so we just did all the right things. My mother went to Ole Miss and my father went to LSU. They're from Mississippi and Louisiana and moved to Texas for a job opportunity. The same reason I moved to New York for a job opportunity. I went to school in Lubbock, Texas, at Texas Tech, guns up, and um, and people. Some people will get that. Some people. Yeah. And uh, I um, 
had an opportunity to move to New York City. I, uh, after school, I lived in Dallas, Texas uh, for about three years in the advertising agency. I worked for an ad agency. And then I had an opportunity to come up to New York for a job. So the job was really, they were going to move me back down to Dallas. But I, when I landed in New York City, I was like, oh, my goodness, this is so great. Right. I, you know, there's a lot to do. It's a great place to live was when you're in your early 20s and single. And and I just really um, fell in love with it. Six years later, I met my husband. But before that, I bought a Manhattan apartment mm -hmm. because you could do that back in 1990. And uh, so I knew that real estate was a good investment. My parents you know, I'd always, you know, put everything in the 401k that you possibly can, um, live below your means, um, buy, you know, rent is a waste of money, buy, buy, make sure you buy your house, you know, whatever. Yep. Um, so I did all, I was doing all of that and I kept kind of moving up the corporate ladder, if you will, because that's what you were supposed to do. Yep. So met a guy, continued moving up the corporate ladder and never really thought about what kind of life I wanted to have necessarily, but it just sort of happened, right? Because that's what you're supposed to do. Yep. And I got very uh, used to the nice hotel. We were talking about this earlier, you know, the expense account. I mean, it's, it's hard to, uh, it's, it's, it, there's a lot of really good things. There's nothing wrong with working. And, uh, but what happened to me was that I woke up about 20 years later. So I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I started thinking. I bought a couple of homes, houses in Houston for rentals because mm -hmm. um, I knew the market and I and I have people down there. And then my my family, you know, has you know, I had I bought some property next to them so that nobody would build the house next to their house. My parents, mm -hmm. my parents retired, moved back to Mississippi where they're from. So. I, I knew about real estate and I knew my husband and I have a four family house in Brooklyn. We renovated that and, and, uh, and live there today and rent out three apartments. And, uh, and so all of that, I knew all of that, but it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It's a ton of work. And I ended up uh, looking at my life and I was very successful and very fortunate, very grateful, but I was paying half of what I was making in taxes. And, you know, there comes a point in at least my career, I was in sales where, you know, it's really kind of topped out. I mean, you're not going to make much more money than you're making now. And so I topped out and it was a nice amount of money, but, but I was paying half of it in taxes and getting nothing, you know, really for it. You know, in the U.S., we don't have you know, you, I, you, know yeah. that, you have to pay for everything. For everything. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, so a friend of mine uh, called me, we were both into real estate and he said, listen, I'm going to quit my job in advertising and I'm going to learn how to buy apartment complexes. And so about another six months later, he called me, he said, I found an apartment complex looking for investors. And I invested with him just to help him. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew how I, I, I knew real estate was good, but I didn't understand really what I was getting into. But I trusted him, and mm -hmm. and I know that that's how it happens now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then I started. Oh my God! You can invest passively and let someone else do the work and get all the tax benefits that real estate gives gives us, at least here in the U.S. Yeah. So, and, and so being able to understand that whole concept of, of active investor or passive investor, and, and maybe even one of the things that more than passive investor, there's passive income. I think there's, everyone is active. Like you need to be able to do that. But if you could break down, uh, you, you've shared some of your story, but let's, let's dig in on this one a little bit. Like the right. whole concept of passive income versus passive investing. <laughs> so, so I don't believe there's anything anything uh, that there's no passive income. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. You have to either work at the property or whatever, or whatever it is you're doing, or you have to have made the money somehow to invest. And so, 
So there is not, no such thing as passive income. However, what what happens is uh, is you really can't, it's hard to make income from what you have saved because the stock market goes up and down and up and down. Mm. And and um, and the bank is a really bad place to put your money because money, the way money works is it's all about velocity. You see, when we put money in the bank, the bank loans that money out to somebody or they or they'll invest it. So when you're in a mutual fund, they're they're investing and they're taking uh, they're making the money. They're investing in things like. uh, our real estate deals, right? And so what I, what I ended up understand, beginning to understand is that private real estate investing cuts out wall street. Like, so when you invest in a mutual fund, you're investing in uh, if if you're you're over here, there's a real estate thing called a real estate investment trust. It's a mutual fund and they buy real estate. Mm -hmm. So so you can invest in publicly traded things, or you can invest in in you know in private placement types of things. And all I knew, so I knew a couple of things about real estate. Number one, I always thought of it as an appreciation play. So you buy low, sell high. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's what we think about with stocks too. Right. So I, I you know I didn't realize that you really can in some places in the world. Uh, uh, cash flow. You can't do that in New York, right? Really, it's hard, very hard to do. And so the people around me, but you can do it in Texas. You can do it in mm-hmm. several places. And then if you get together with a whole bunch of people and buy a big apartment complex, yep. you can cash flow from day one if you do it right. It's mm-hmm. pretty easily. Yep. So that cash flow is income. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's what we do. We share the income from the cash flow that the tenants pay rent. So, so the so. tenants are paying rent. You're working with other people and you are able to create passive investing. Um, you're spending right. time to understand more about the team, more about the specific location and all of those things, which makes a lot of sense. I just want to take a step back because you hit on something and I would love for you to give an example. Yeah. So because you're talking about investing your time, your capital in a place that's going to give you a return. And I've heard these stories about people that are investing in their mutual funds. Mm -hmm. And maybe the mutual fund, you don't get any actual money out of it. And somehow it still costs you money. Like, how can you maybe explain if that if what I'm talking about, if that's, if that's true or not, and if it's true, and if it's true, maybe you could share a little bit of your experience with us. So, so three things happened to me that led me to really, really begin to explore these things. Number one, my parents passed away Hmm. and a year, year and a half or so apart. And I watched their savings, you know, the stock market, we think in our head that if we have a million dollars in that 401k or whatever, that it's going to throw up 80 grand a year. And that's not what happens. And we're told these things, we're told that our expenses are going to go down in retirement. That is such nonsense. They go up because you still, you know, you have more vacation. You want to spend time with your family, with your kids, all that stuff. <laughs> but the, and taxes always go up. And we put the money in when the, our tax rate is low because we're not making much money. And we take it out when it's high. And the, it, it's just crazy. So, so that's the, the the first thing. So second thing that happened was that I had an opportunity to invest in one of these things and learned when I saw my what was happening and that I had losses that offset the income I was making, paper loss, paper losses, mm-hmm. not real losses, yeah. but paper losses that offset the income. So I was like, oh my God, I'm not paying 50% now. You know, I'm paying nothing, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm just defer, defer, defer. Yeah. And then uh, the third thing that happened was that I had a financial advisor like you're supposed to do. And he had me in all these mutual funds and I got it. And it's, it's really great every year. You know, I made $10,000. Woohoo. Isn't, aren't I great. Right. You know, I don't never snap to the fact that I was paying taxes on that money. Then when I made $65,000 one year, 
And I, oh, oh, by the way, you owe 30 grand in taxes. I was like, what, what, what? I didn't take any money. (laughs) So what's happening is that Wall Street, if you look at the economy right now, I mean, it makes no sense The they're buying and selling and they're telling us to hold for the long haul, but they're, they're buying and selling in nanoseconds. And so they're not doing what they tell us that we need to do. And so that's always a red flag for me. And and so I I think that, you know, when you get that red flag, because, and I just want to reiterate, so there's a couple of things. So you were talking about your situation and and of course, everybody needs to talk to their tax people because everybody's situation is going to be, no, no, you're not a tax person. I'm not a tax person. We're just, we're just, we're just just sharing it. We're just sharing experiences here. Right. But what, what I think everybody needs to understand is you just said that you got a tax bill and you didn't actually have the cash in your hand. It was sitting in an account but you had to pay taxes on it. It's crazy. It, 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 so that, that makes, I don't know who that makes sense to, but it happens all the time. All and, the time. And one of the other things you didn't even mention, Holly, but imagine that you had that same million dollars and you were just investing it yourself outside of a, a defined contribution plan. Well, if you're holding it over a certain period of time, and once again, everybody check with their tax people, the understanding is that you would actually even pay less taxes on the same amount of money, but because it's in a specific type of qualified plan, Bingo. it's taxed at a higher rate, which is just unbelievable. It's <laughs> like the it biggest just... <laughs> scam that we were ever sold. It's yeah. now some companies match it and all that. Now that's, I mean, it's not a bad thing, but it's really, um, you just got to look at your individual situation. So yeah. So it, yeah. There, and not only that, if the stock market returns on an average over time, and this is true, eight to 10% a year or whatever, then why isn't our for everybody's 401k making 10%? Well, the reason is is because Wall Street's taking so much money out of that and fees and everything else. I mean, it costs so, 401ks cost so much, mutual funds cost so much. People tell me, oh, I'm in Vanguard index funds. I don't pay fees, Uh uh-uh. Read the fine print. There, yeah. it's costing money. Yeah, it's 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 all in there, and it's it's uh, well, you just have to read the fine print, right? And so, nobody does. Things, well, yeah, because the prospectus is like this long and this big, and 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 so yeah, people just uh, right. push it to the side. So help help us understand. So while, while we're on this, right? Because you, we talked earlier about hidden hidden investing, and these are some of the topics you you talk about. But talk about what this why you had this labor of love to get hidden investing and share the tagline with us. And so that like, what was on your heart that made you want to write this book and really get it out for people to, to learn from? Because my parents really thought, and so many other people do. I mean, that's how the annuity business stays in, you know, the thing. My parents retired with what they thought, would be enough. And it was not. And when my, when I was going through their things, so so first of all, I was paying people under the table so that they could stay in their house and stuff. But I found like stuff. My father was doing math, math, to see how long he had before he was going to have to move. I mean, it was just heartbreaking. And, and they spent, they were getting killed with taxes and you know we're we're grateful that 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 you know cuz again you see we people don't talk about the the everybody talks about the 0.5% or the 1% yeah. everybody talks about the really impoverished and it's terrible but nobody talks about uh those of us that are kind of in the middle and have have really tried to work very hard and it's not a sad story but it is because we're paying the whole thing yep for everybody and 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 it, and it just when when you know i had to send my daughter to private school and all that cuz the schools are whatever and you know it's just it's just uh it's just not not right when you can learn Everybody talks about, everybody's saying how terrible, you know, that all the, our tax code is written to incentivize us to do things to help the economy. So who, and it's the law. So who would disagree 
that we should follow the law. So if there's if anybody's got a problem with Donald Trump playing and paying seven hundred fifty dollars in taxes, needs to look at the law. He would be in jail. I mean, he would totally be in jail for tax fraud. They're, they keep saying that he's gonna be. I guarantee you, he's got so many accountants and everything that they're, that's how our law works. There are Jeff Bezos didn't pay taxes either. Warren Buffett has said that his secretary pays a higher percentage than him. So this stuff isn't secret. It's just hidden. And then we don't know what to do if you don't grow up like that. You don't know where to find these deals. You don't know. Yeah. So, so, and, and so on that point, so you, so really the hidden investing was about being able to share what you were becoming more and more aware of through your own life experiences so that others are able to gain access to this information to be able right. to, and maybe I'm extrapolating here, but to be no, able to right. better their, their life. I right? should have said that's a very good answer, but, but yeah, I want to keep people from making the same mistakes and ending up because it was indeed very, it was heartbreaking. And that's my why yep. is that I don't want my daughter to have to go through. It was just, Heartbreaking. It was just so, so nobody wants to go through heartbreak. And I'm going to ask you a question. And I don't usually ask a lot of questions that are super, super provocative, but I feel like I need to ask this one. Like do it's it. just, it's just on my heart to ask this question. Do right? it. Let's do it. So you, you, so you talk about this kind of these concepts of you're able to get to investments that not necessarily everybody knows about. Correct. There is a concept um, that is known as a, an accredited investor, right? There's an accredited investor, there's sophisticated investors, and someone like myself, like I would be a first generation accredited investor. Like Correct. Why, 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 would, why would like the financial services industry or a financial advisor, why would they not be telling us that, you, you know what, you're, you know what, Holly, you're an accredited investor. Why would they not tell you that? Because they lose money. And I got to tell you, there are people, I wrote this book and I released it in May, but I'm just now starting to really talk about it because some people did not like it. Mm. And, and, you know, they don't, the, every dollar that you take that financial advisor, I took my take, taking money out and that's money out of his pocket. That's the first thing. Mm. The second thing is, we don't, I went to business school. I didn't learn. I learned about the stock market. Yep. You see, And then these financial advisors, those people on Wall Street, they get out of college and they get a job in, oh, Merrill Lynch's training program. Well, you know, fidelity. They don't want them to know either. And so they, this training program teaches them all about fidelity stuff. And they're selling, they're salespeople. Most financial advisors are salespeople. And my CPA was really a tax preparer. He wasn't a, an accountant. He wasn't a CPA. He had a CPA, but he wasn't, yep. he, he, you know, so, so you really have to, um, it, it's not easy to find, but it's there. It's just hidden. And once you know how to Google multifamily syndication, <laughs> then all of a sudden all this whole stuff comes up. But if you don't know to do that, you don't know. Yeah, no, I I, I love that and that that resonate. Like I, I was just thinking, I was like, I gotta ask you this question because it was it was it was one of those things that's there. Um, sure. you know, there there's another concept, and you talked about your experience. Oh, and it's and not hard to be an accredited investor, not really, not really. But it's set up to protect us. But it's one of those things, a lot of laws have these collateral damages, right? And so it's set up to protect, supposedly to protect us, right? From, right. from, from, you have to be like, understand investing and everything. But it, I was an accredited investor for years and years and didn't know what that was. Didn't, didn't so even know it. Yeah. And so, and I know that there are some things I'm sure people will Google it. Like there are new, new ways to become an accredited investor. It's not just the typical 200, 300,000 over the last two years and this year and then or a million dollars in net worth minus your home. You can now actually go and take a test. And, but I'm sure that people that really want to know more about will take your advice and we'll go. For, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll go and they, they will go and Google that. But th let's talk about your, um, your corporate experience and how did that corporate experience that you did for quite a while that you mentioned, how has that actually helped you and accelerated your success as an investor? 
So I know how this is, well, at least what I do is apartment complexes. Yep. And, you know, everybody talks about raising money, raising money. The, the real work starts after you get it. And so this is executing a business plan. Mm-hmm. This is, I mean, I used to manage a sales team, right? And, yep. and this is about P&L. This is about hitting, hitting key performance KPIs, yep. right? This is about executing and managing people yep. and managing a management company. And it's about communicating to investors. So it is, it, it, this is a business plan. And so business people understand that. Number one and number two, I, I can talk to business people because I understand it. And yeah. most of the people I work with came from the corporate world, and it's it's the same conversation. No matter if you were selling <laughs> widgets or you were selling advertising or whatever, it's the same. It's a yeah. There's a very similar skill set there, and it's the same skill set that that you need to run an apartment complex to manage yeah. manage that. And, and I love that you said that because it is one of those things when you've been in a big corporate environment, especially when you are in larger projects, right, which is what syndicators are doing, is typically very large projects, managing expectations uh, of other people and, and, and their dreams, their emotions, their, their desires. And then you actually have a business plan that you must execute and make sure that that is happening in a way that's transparent and, and communicated. And I love the thing that you said is that there's similar skills. So there's a lot of transferable skills that helps you mm-hmm. to relate when you're in a big corporate and you're wanting to understand more about this private world. Right. Um, and I, and I think that that is, uh, is fantastic. You in something you should understand the business plan and you yeah. should trust the people that are executing that business plan. So yeah. business experience is a, is a great, you need that to go, you know, understand what you're investing in. Yeah. Uh, Whereas the stock market, who knows why it goes up? <sighs> That's just it. People say, I don't have control. I want to own the house or buy the house. It's like, are you kidding me? You're putting money in the stock market and they don't have a clue. They don't have any idea. Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of conversations recently. It says, well, why is the economy moving one way and the <laughs> the stock market is moving another? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Um, no. They, they're, I think well, there's a three-letter no, word that kind of helps. To me. The, you have expenses mm-hmm. and the tenants pay rent. And you pay the expenses from the rent and whatever's left over is profit. I mean, it, 100% of the time, that's how it works. Yeah. And when you can't do that, you're not in business very long. So and Correct. it's it's very simple to understand. So it's very simple to understand. Wow. This is, I love the simplicity of these types of things. And you know what, Holly, I like, I have this whole desire just to want to keep talking to you forever because I, we are, oh, it's fun, I, we, right? we're, yeah, it's, it's, it is a lot of fun. And also being able to share these stories that are, are helpful mm-hmm. and relevant uh, at the same time, time is limited. I know. And I realized that, um, you know what, before I can let you go, we actually have to ask you the going long final three, but the thing is how yeah. I never ask the going long final three, unless you tell me that you're ready for me to ask. So are you ready? I'm ready. Awesome. Let's go. All right, let's go. Let's go. So first question is, um, as you know, I live here in Barcelona. I'm always interested. I asked you in the beginning, you're in the US. And, and now if you kind of focus back on Europe, what is your favorite European city, either that you visited or still on your bucket list? Florence. Florence. Just, l- love it. I mean, all of Italy is just so much history, but Florence in particular is just Absolutely incredible. I love it. And I am a, uh, a big fan of Florence as well. So second question, as a successful individual, mother, corporate employee, investor, um, I'm going to guess that you've probably only made one mistake in your entire life. Only one. Mm-hmm. All right. Maybe a couple more. Um, I have to so, really yeah. Hard. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> if you can think of, if you can think of one mistake that you made along the way that you would like to think, all right, I learned a valuable lesson in this mistake. What is that one lesson that you would pay forward to, to, to others? I think that it's it's trusting your gut and really not believing what the experts say, um, but but do your homework um, because it's it's uh, the experts don't always know. All right, so do your it's homework. Not that they're bad people. It's just that they don't always know. They don't always know. They don't always know your context and things like that. So they I think grew that up is like a- we did. They grew up. I didn't know. Me neither. 
but uh, we're paying it forward now. So, uh, so thank That's you right. for thank you for that. And look, we talked about earlier already as a as a published author with a hidden investing, um, and we're going to make sure that we include that in the show notes. But at the same time, I'd love for you to recommend uh, a book that's made a positive impact on you. So I, I say this because I haven't found a better book. Um, uh, there's a there's an author Edward Rutherford. And he writes historical fiction, and I love historical fiction. And he also wrote books of Paris. He wrote, mm. I mean, but there's a book called New York that he okay. wrote. Uh-huh. And what he does is he takes these cities, and so in the case of New York, it he follows it from the time of the uh, Indian, you know, inhabiting the island of Manhattan, mm-hmm. right? the Native Americans, all the way to the uh, World Trade Center attacks. And it's he traces four families and all through there you see the the Astors and the Rockefellers and and all everything that 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 happened all these, you know, through the through the course of history. And it's fascinating. Wow. Awesome. So Rutherford in New York. So we will also include that in the show notes. So, so much awesomeness. And, you know, Holly, you've talked about being all the way from the great state of Texas and having family members that were uh, from Mississippi and being able to learn and see from what your parents did in terms of uh, being able to work. You've also looked afterwards, you got a chance to move to New York City, started to open your eyes. You got some investing uh, experience. And since then, I mean, you are doing lots of long distance investing as a passive investor, as an active investor. Um, And the corporate experience that you talked about also is having very relevant in the space that you're playing, which is in the in the multifamily space, apartment complexes, apartment really buildings. Anywhere you're going to put your money, you yeah. Need to understand it. And, and you've even had that passion to get out and write hidden investing. And so, I know that I want to keep talking to you forever. And I know that there's so many people that are watching us now and are listening to us that are like, I've got to get to know Holly Williams more. I want to find out more about what she's doing, interact with her. So help us understand what is the best way for our audience to get in touch with you. So Holly at Keep More dot com because yep. that's what this is all about and uh, or you can go to hiddeninvesting.com and there's a little free gift there about my mistakes that I made and then you know you can get the book if you so choose and all of those things so hidden investing is probably and then there's a way to get in touch with me as well Okay. Awesome. So hiddeninvesting.com and also holly at keepmore.com. And we will include those in the show notes that will live on forever and ever. And so no matter when you're listening and or watching this, make sure that you reach out to Holly. So uh, Holly, this has been awesome. So I really, really want to thank you for taking the time, sharing with us uh, and helping us to learn and helping to get more of those like hidden investing things out there so that you're helping to pay it forward. And, And thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And thanks to everybody for listening. All right. Awesome. And so just as Holly said, I want to thank the entire Going Long audience for, for listening to us once again, just to say thank you. And at the same time, I want to ask you to go out and at least share today's episode with two or to three other people, because I know that you know someone that Holly's message is definitely going to resonate with. They're going to learn so much from hearing what she's talked about from a relevant experience and helping them to move forward. So you're going to actively be a participant in helping them to move forward. So share it with, like I said, at least two to three other people. And um, you know what? Leave us a review. We'd love to know what are the things that really resonated in today's conversation. Like, what did you like about what uh, what Holly said? What would you have loved for her to go even more into? So we'll be able to share that with one another and make sure that we get as many responses to you as possible. You know, if you want to leave a five-star review, we'll accept that as well. So, um, and, and until the very next time that we have an opportunity to see and, and listen to one another, I'm really looking forward to it. So I want to wish you a wonderful day. So uh, go out and make it a great day and I'll see you for the uh, next episode. Thanks a lot. Wow, don't you love hearing from top-notch experts in the field? You know, when I was getting started, I really wish that I would have had access to such experts. And even more, I wish they would have given me like a really simple list of things to follow so that I could have gotten to my goals much faster and been much happier even sooner. So that's why I've created for you the seven things that you should avoid in order to be successful in long distance investing. And you can pick that up really easily by going to billykeels.com forward slash seven things to avoid. And also, if you liked today's episode, don't forget to leave a five-star review. I'm looking forward to seeing you on our very next episode. 
So go out and make it a great day.